Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Harris. I'm here introducing Leanne Bell. She's a sophomore here at Virginia Tech. She is an environmental horticulture major and she will be talking to you today about saving the rainforest. Fun fact about Miss Leanne is that she's from Moldova and that she has a fish named Thad Castle. So everybody, this is Miss Leanne Bell on saving the rainforest. Thank you um, so much for the introduction, um, my name is Leanne, and to start off today, I'd like for just everybody to take a moment, and in your head, if you could just count to six for me. Okay, so that's about six seconds. Um, and so the reason that I had you do that is because ooh, um, every six seconds, an acre of a rainforest somewhere in the world is destroyed, it's either cut down or, you know, the contract is signed that it will eventually be cut down and destroyed. Um, so six seconds, that's all it takes for an entire acre of a rainforest somewhere. So if we do the math, you know, an hour is 600 acres, 24 hours is 14,400 acres, and so on and so forth. And so every year, over five million acres of a rainforest is cut down somewhere in the world for a plantation, a farm, industrialization, something like that. So it is very real and it is happen happening very rapidly. Um, so lots of people advocate today um, for saving exotic species in the rainforest, saving you know, a particular species of poison dart frog or a particular species of you know, a small mammal, things like that. But what lots of people don't understand is that in order to save a species, you have to save their environment. Um, a herd of elephants can't live on a plantation. They need the jungle environment, the prairie, the terrain to sustain them. So lots of um, campaigns like this are out there today. Save the trees, save the forests, save the wildlife, save the earth, because it is all encompassing that of the fact that you can't just focus on one aspect of a rainforest or of a jungle environment, you really do have to save everything. You have to save the exotic species, you have to save the trees, the plants, the vines, the weeds. You have to save um, and protect the soil and um, to prevent erosion. You have to protect the atmosphere, the thick nitrous air that is in a rainforest. So a couple of other species, um, this is the mountain gorilla, it is native to the Republic of Congo, Uganda, and Rwanda. The manatee, which lives in the, off the warm coasts of Brazil and Africa. Uh, an animal that I talked about in a previous presentation, the orangutan that lives exclusively in Malaysia and Indonesia. And the Bengal tiger, which lives in India, Bangladesh, and Nepal. Uh, these are a few species that Lots of people know about, you've heard about them, you're very aware, but I'd also like to touch on a couple of species that not many people may know about. Right here in the corner we have the Orinco crocodile, which lives only in Colombia and Venezuela. Here we have the three-toed sloth, which lives only in the Brazilian basin, as well as the harpy eagle, which is found in the same area as the three-toed sloth um, in Brazil, and um, the red slender lorax. Loris, which lives only in Sri Lanka. So species from all over the world, rainforests <coughs> that stretch from um, every corner of the earth, and all of these animals are on the endangered species list due to deforestation and the destruction of their territory, of their ecosystems. Um, and I'd now like to talk a little bit about some human faces. So these are the faces of childhood leukemia. And you may be wondering what that has to do with the rainforest and how they're related. And I'll tell you that it's this flower. This is called the rose periwinkle. It's native to southeastern Madagascar. Uh, some other um, varieties of the plant do grow in other places, places, but this specific cultivar lives only in southeastern Madagascar. That's where it grows in nature and where it grows um, the best. And it is a key component in a cancer-fighting drug called vimblastin. And this drug is relatively new, uh, five to ten years, which you may think is a long time, but in the world of medicine, it's actually still relatively new and we're still learning lots of things about it. But it's a key component in this particular medicine, and it has increased the chances of a child surviving leukemia from 10% to 95%. 
So that's a huge difference, uh, a huge step forward in the lives of many children that are affected by childhood leukemia, their families, their friends, their extended families. And when you look at those connections, this, it, this single plant is affecting hundreds and thousands of people every day. Um, and even more so, there are still things that we're learning about this plant, but it is also a key component in a supplement called Vinca. And um, if taken as a daily supplement, Vinca increases the levels of oxygen and glucose to the brain. It increases the flow of blood through your entire bloodstream. It also prevents coagulation of the blood in um, their joint areas and areas of um, strenuous movement. And it increases the level of neurotransmitter serotonin to your brain. So all of these amazing things that are sustaining your life and helping your body to live longer from this one single plant. And when you think about how much we still don't know about the rainforest and things that grow and live there, it seems almost ignorant to blatantly cut it down without knowing what it might have to offer us. I'm a firm believer that we can, you know, um, have benefits from the rainforest and, you know, take things that we need without having it all destroyed. And that way, um, these ecosystems and our societies can live in harmony, which really, to me, is the best way to solve this kind of problem. Um, unfortunately, palm oil is one of the number one things that is taking place of our rainforest in the world. Uh, palm oil is grown by a palm oil on a palm oil plantation. It's called a palm oil tree. Um, the oil is extracted from the stone fruits that the tree produces, you know, each season. And um, palm oil can be found in quite a lot of different things. It's found in your whipped cream, your coffee creamer, Nutella sugary breakfast cereals, candy bars, some um, brands of potato chips. It's found in so many things. But when you think about it, I think that it might be more worth it to have, you know, a plant that will save someone's life as opposed to having coffee creamer in your coffee each morning. So it really is something that you have to decide. Extreme weather. You have your droughts here, if you can see it. This is a huge tornado, um, hurricane. You have terrible floods and huge snowstorms, and you may also be wondering what that has to do with the rainforest. Um, and I'll tell you that the rainforest is the number one um, moderator and protector and of the world's climate. So because rainforests are so thick and so lush and full of you know, green photosynthesizing plants, they regulate um, the entire Earth's climate through their absorption and collection of rainfall. So because of the rainforest, it controls the currents in the ocean, the tides, the wind patterns, and the wind currents all over the world, um, your temperatures, and extreme weather like this. As rainforests are cut down, it's changing the Earth's reflectivity, which means that events like this are going to become more common. You don't usually see extreme drought or terrible floods and snowstorms and huge tornadoes like this today. There are very rare occurrences, but as the rainforest is cut down faster and faster, these types of things are going to become increasingly more prevalent, and it's going to be a big problem for us. And so all of these factors, all of these species and plants and cancer-curing drugs are found in these few yellow areas <coughs> in the world. You can't see some of them because of this box, but these few yellow areas are all that is left of you know, the regulation of the entire world's climate. Uh, cancer-fighting drugs and drugs that we haven't even discovered yet because we don't know what the rainforest holds and hundreds of thousands of species, over 50% of the world's biodiversity in these yellow spaces. So it's not too late. It's time for people to, you know, take action and, um, you know, do something about saving the rainforest. Um, and I would urge you all to think about it urgently and, you um, to do something now and make changes because it's not too late yet, but it will be very soon. Thank you.